This is ScreenPrintingArtist.com. Come check out my new site if you haven't seen it yet. It's going to be revamped in about two to three weeks. You should have a new facelift, and we have a bunch of new content coming up, so definitely check it out. Um, today I'm going to show in this video how to quickly set up and separate a name drop in screen printing in Corel Draw. I'm using X5 in this, but all this stuff will work equally in X6. So let me get rid of this. First, let's do all of our type. Go ahead and set it up. Here. And we just quickly have to pick a font. Usually I pick one font and then I can edit it later. So pick this font. As you can see, the lower case isn't working for the other font, but we can swap that out real quick. Go ahead and use a script font just to get some variation below it. This one we're going to make just a little bit of a collegiate look here. It's real common on t-shirts. Zoom out. Here we'll go ahead and use the envelope tool single arc, you hold the control key down, bump it up, and I like drag it down a little bit bigger. Then we can center it, use the P key to center it, drop our cursor for script font below it. Here we're just going to do a, um, if you hit the F12 key you'll get your outline. You can do like a four point outline on this. Um, and then we're going to do a quick fill which is kind of the point of this exercise, and we're just going to keep it simple here to show how to set this quickly. Say OK. And then I'm going to boost up the outline just a little bit, and I'll put it to front. Let's go 8. And then one quick way to make a drop shadow is to duplicate it, Control D shift page down and then you just hold the shift key and you nudge it down a little bit and then you hit a black fill and the jiu-jitsu below we'll put red you can center it using the C key and we'll duplicate that nudge it over a little bit and then put that to the back as well and this is a start for a logo we'll put one little element behind it just to keep things simple here put a triangle behind the whole thing, which I guess kind of makes sense with the logo the way it is. Come up a little bit, and we can quickly duplicate that, hold the shift key, drag it down to the middle, just nudge it down a little bit, and we set both of those to back, and we up the outline to somewhere around four. And we'll keep them as a red fill. And then when you want to knock things out, group that. Control D is duplicate. And then put a white outline around the outside. Make sure you scale the image. Doesn't matter if it's behind the fill or not, because when you hold the control key and page down, then you can see it knocks out around it. You could do the same thing here, but for this uh, for this, we're just going to get right into separating it quickly. And assuming we're going on white garments, we're just going to check the size. And this is on a tabloid sheet spread horizontally. So for most printers, you'd be you wouldn't want to go much above 13. So we'll check where that's at. So you got right here. So we're we're within that scale just about 12 inches and we save our file um, somewhere on the desktop is fine anywhere is fine save it and then we I'm going to import some crosshairs in here really quick let me minimize this and here's some crosshairs copy those paste them in here and you can see that we're a little off center with the triangle which is why that's useful to have that center point there. So what I'll do is take our triangle and group that 
I'll just take these two. I'll shrink them down a little bit. Kind of group, and I'll hit the P key, and then that'll center that for us. Let's make sure Jujitsu here is centered. Group. I'll put it to center of page, and then I'll drag it down. Looks like it is, but sometimes angled fonts you want to bump over just so visually they don't look like they're off center. So now we're all squared up. Save the file again, Control S. I'm going to put my colors in down here for the separations. So we'll go black, just go black, yellow, and red. And we'll hit OK to save that. And I'll ungroup it, and then I'll break it apart. And then what we do is we save this file. A lot of times I'll save a sep version of it as well. And I'll make two, three more pages. I'll keep the top page as my full color version. I'll grab everything or control A and I'll copy it. And I'll go to the second page and I'll, I'll paste that. And then I'll go to the next page, paste it, the next page, paste it. And then this first page is going to be our first color, which in this case is yellow. So I need to basically take out anything here that isn't yellow. There's a couple ways of doing it. If you have this handy uh, color replacer from Oberon, you can find that at Oberon.com. You can use that. Um, you can use the edit, replace, replace objects to replace the colors. Um, if you have a simple design, a lot of times you can just grab elements quick and just go fill, fill. You know, right click, left click, fill them with white. Here we only want yellow, so I can grab the background click click and then grab the foreground right click and then the only thing I want in here is going to be the yellow now in this case I want the yellow to print first and since the red's blending on top the only half tone I'm going to have in here is the red so I'm going to leave the yellow solid so I'm just going to hit that with black and then I have a solid yellow underprint which will make a smoother blend so and then I go to the next one which will be my red fill so I want to get rid of these two Eat. And then my red fill, I'm basically going to do the same thing. Everything in here that's black is going to become white. And then everything that's, let me click on that, make sure I got, I'm getting the wrong thing. You got to hold the control key to get into a group, which is how you get inside a group to select just one object. And you go boom, boom there. It's still kind of, here, let me ungroup everything. Whoops. Group. There we go. And then we can just leave that red there. And then you can click these two. You're going to make those black. So make those black. Make this red here. If I had a lot of little pieces, I'd probably use one of these scripts to see. I can see some red in there somewhere. So let's see what happened here. Okay, it's red. So click. And then my last one is this red fade here. A lot of times with fountain fills, you can't just go with your replacing colors. You have to edit them a little bit. And you can see how this isn't really making a great... It's going to be just like a solid orange. It's not really going to give you a great fade. So what I'll do in this case is I'll control K or I'll control uh, Q, convert it to a curve. And then I'll go ahead and break it apart a little bit. And then I can edit each one of these. Um, control L, and I'll just to see it, I'll make it gray. Just the ones that have two pieces anyways. And then I'll take all of these and I'll group them. As long as I don't change position, it shouldn't change where my um, fade falls. And what I'll do is this. I'll bump up and make it more of a custom. That'll give me a little more solid red on top and it'll bleed out to nothing at the bottom. And this one, if it doesn't look right, you can always come in here and kind of adjust where the darkness edge is using this tool right here, interactive fill tool. So now I got a fade that's going to give me a better look on the screen printed version. Here, it'll be closer to this. It may even be a little better than what we have there. Maybe we could demo it a little bit by doing this here. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but you get the idea. Let's save this file so far. And then, assuming we need our black here, so we can just do a white fill here. And this this piece is going to be white. And this will be a white fill. And then I just got to zoom in real close here and get rid of my red. 
So this is going to be my black fade. Now, in this case, we'll get rid of these other colors on this plate. Now, I've almost had this thing separated. Three colors, yellow, my red, my black. Now, in the outside chance you don't have a rip, what you can do here is you can click on these, click on this, and you're going to go, this is a technique for, uh, if you don't have a rip, you're going to go bitmaps, convert to bitmap, make sure you're transparent so it'll sit right on top, because we're only going to convert what we need to. 600 dpi, you want it to be grayscale. Now before you do that, what you want to do is go into your image, in your fountain fill, and you want to convert your solid areas of black to, i got to wait a minute for this to recognize my switch here. You want to make this grayscale, and the reason is that way your 100% blacks here will be 100%. You see it darken up here. That way when you convert it to what you need to, which is going to be a grayscale bitmap at 600 dpi, you're going to have um, a solid black. Otherwise, it'll if you go from CMYK black to grayscale, it'll give you like 87% or something. There'll be holes in it. So then we go bitmaps mode, black and white. You go to half tone, probably round would be best. 22 degrees is always safe. And depending on your screen printing process, you may want anywhere around 55 for a smooth half tone blend doesn't look smooth here, but if you zoom in, you'll see it is. Um, or you can go with, um, you know, one of these popular bigger half tones, which would be, you know, use like a 15, which is one of these ones where it looks big and chunky, which is kind of cool for a modern, modern look if you want everybody to see the dots. So in that way, and when you're done, you can save this, and then when you print it out, print, you're only going to use the pages that have your steps on it, 2, 4, and then your print preview. Of course, you need to have the right paper size in here, which I don't know if this will support, but in any event, um, you know, some places won't. This might at least let us view it. I'll put it in legal for now, apply. Um, <coughs> at least we can view it. We won't see the crosshairs, but you'll get the idea. Um, I don't print steps on this printer, obviously. So this is going to be a yellow plate. This is going to be our red. And this will be our black. So that's a way to do a quick three color separation. Replacing here, no rip, obviously. Um, this is 100% black outline. Um, and you can print it out quick, produce it quick, and it'll give you a good result.